too many, the ultimate Nissan would be the R34 Skyline or maybe even the R32. They are super well known and loved by many. Powered by the renowned RB26DE TT engine, these cars have become symbols of JDM royalty. What if I told you that Nissan made something even better? And yes, they did make a road legal version as well. This is the Nissan R390. Now the Nissan R390 was more than just a car. It was a cultural phenomenon, a symbol of an era when automotive manufacturers were pushing the boundaries of engineering and design to unimaginable limits. She was born from the crucible of endurance racing and embodied the spirit of competition, innovation and ambition. So the story starts off in the late 1990s. The world of motorsports was undergoing a seismic shift. GT1 racing, with its relatively liberal regulations, offered a playground for automakers to showcase their technological prowess. Nissan, recognizing the potential, entered the fray with a singular purpose, to dominate. The R390 was the result, a masterpiece of engineering and design that would leave an undeniable mark on the automotive world. Now the development process was a complex interplay of Eastern and Western engineering philosophies. Nissan brought its deep-rooted racing heritage and relentless pursuit of perfection. DWR, the company charged with collaborating on the project on the other hand, contributed its wealth of expertise in endurance racing and a proven track record of success. The design brief was clear, build a car capable of winning Le Mans while adhering to the stringent GT1 regulations which mandated a road-going version. The result was a stunning marriage of form and function, a car that was as much a work of art as it was a high-performance machine. At the heart of the R390 was a twin turbocharged V8 engine, the VRH35L. This power plant was a masterpiece of engineering, delivering immense power and torque while maintaining su surprising levels of reliability. Developed in collaboration with the WR, the VRH35L was a departure from Nissan's traditional inline 6 configuration. But they chose it for a reason. You see, the small 3.5 liter V8 offered a lower center of gravity as well as a better weight distribution. With approximately 641 horsepower on tap, the engine propelled the R390 to breathtaking speeds. The twin turbocharger system provided a seamless and brutal surge of power making the car feel almost impossibly quick. Coupled with a six-speed sequential gearbox, the power delivery was nothing short of ferocious. But with endurance races, you need the car to stick to the ground. So let's move on to aerodynamics. The R390's aerodynamic package was a testament to the skill and dedication of its designers. Every surface, from the aggressive front design to the towering rear wing, was meticulously sculpted to optimize airflow and generate maximum downforce. The car's underbody was equally important, with careful attention paid to managing airflow and reducing drag. The result was a car that seemed to cling to the road, generating levels of grip that defied belief. The R390's aerodynamic efficiency was a key factor in its ability to corner at such high speeds, giving the car a distinct advantage over its rivals. So with all of that, exactly how fast was it? While the R390's racing career was a roller coaster of highs and lows, despite showing immense promise, reliability issues plagued the car in its debut year at Le Mans. However, Nissan persevered and the following year saw a significant improvement in performance and reliability, culminating in all four cars being in the top 10 and Nissan taking third place overall, only being beaten by the Porsche GT1. By the way, I have made a video on the Porsche GT1, so if that's something that you would like to see, go and watch it after this one. But let's continue. So, as I said earlier in the video, to comply with regulations, they also had to produce a road car. And while the racing version of the R390 captured the world's imagination on the racing stage, it was the road car that truly defied belief. With only one in existence, this would be the ultimate unicorn of any Nissan enthusiast. With its stunning looks and immense power, the road-going R390 was a car for the ages. And Nissan actually almost put this thing into production. You see, according to Road & Track 1998, the car was going to go onto the market at a cool $1 million. But Nissan never went through with it, and in the end, only one was ever built. Now the road car was the tune, producing only around 550 horsepower. 
but 550 horsepower was plenty thanks to its carbon monocoque design. You see, she only weighed in at 1,100 kilograms. So in terms of power to weight, this thing was actually a real weapon with a top speed of over 350 kilometers per hour. By the way, before I end this video off, I do have two interesting facts for you. One, if you own a McLaren MB4-12C, you technically have the same engine as this Nissan. And two, this million dollar hypercar has the same headlights as the Nissan 300ZX. Yeah. So anyways, at the end of this video, please let me know what you guys thought of the video and what you guys think of this car. If you guys enjoyed this video, find it informative, leave a like and subscribe. And also if you enjoyed this video, you'll like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's someone else like, I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?